In this video, we're going to explore motion graphs, focusing on the area under velocity time graphs and acceleration time graphs. We'll look at interpreting graphs to understand the motion shown, drawing graphs from descriptions of motion, and drawing different types of graphs for the same motion. Recall that, for an object undergoing uniform acceleration, the instantaneous velocity can be determined by the gradient of the tangent to the position time graph. Plotting the instantaneous velocity as a function of time provides us a velocity time graph from which we can calculate the acceleration from the gradient. We can also use the area under the velocity time graph to understand quantitative information about the motion depicted. The area bounded by the velocity time graph and the time axis is the displacement of the object during the time interval. For uniform acceleration, this area can be broken into rectangles and triangles so it can be easily calculated. Let's examine this quantitatively using the position as a function of time graph, the instantaneous velocity as a function of time graph, and the velocity as a function of time graph that assumes the object moved at a constant velocity equal to the average for the same motion. We can read the displacement over a given time interval directly from a position time graph. In the first five seconds of motion, the position changes from zero meters to positive five meters, so the displacement is five meters. We can calculate the displacement from the velocity time graph by calculating the area of the triangle bounded by the graph and the time axis. The area of a triangle is the product of the base and height over two, so the displacement is the product of 2.0 meters per second and five seconds over two, which is five meters. The displacement calculated from the velocity time graph is the same as the displacement read from the position time graph. What if instead of examining the instantaneous velocity as a function of time, we examined a graph that assumes the object moved at a constant velocity, equal to the average velocity during the time interval? The average velocity during the first five seconds of motion is one meter per second, so the area bounded by the graph and the time axis is five meters. Again, the displacement calculated from the average velocity is the same as the displacement read from the position time graph and as the displacement calculated from the instantaneous velocity time graph. Let's explore how we can calculate an object's displacement from a velocity time graph when the object's motion changes. Here we have corresponding position time and velocity time graphs for several consecutive types of motion. The values on the horizontal axis for the velocity time graph also apply to the horizontal axis of the position time graph. For both graphs, each time the motion changes, the color of the journey segment changes. In the first four seconds of motion, the object accelerates in a positive direction. From the position time graph, we can see that the object's displacement in this segment is positive four meters. Examining the corresponding velocity time graph, we can see the area bounded by the graph is above the time axis because the displacement is in a positive direction. The area of the triangle is four meters, the same as the displacement from the position time graph. In the next two seconds of motion, the object moves with constant positive velocity. From the position time graph, we can see the object's displacement in this segment is positive four meters, from four meters to eight meters. On the velocity time graph, the area bounded by the graph is above the time axis because the displacement is in a positive direction. The area of this rectangle is four meters, the same as the displacement from the position time graph. In the next four seconds of motion, the object decelerates in a positive direction. From the position time graph, we can see that the object's displacement in this segment is positive four meters. On the velocity time graph, the area bounded by the graph is above the time axis because the displacement is positive. The area of this triangle is four meters. For the next two seconds of motion, the object is stationary. From the position time graph, we can see the object's displacement in this segment is zero. The object remains at positive 12 meters. On the velocity time graph, there is no area between the graph and the time axis because there is no displacement. For the next four seconds of motion, the object accelerates in a negative direction. From the position time graph, we can see the object's displacement in this segment is negative four meters. On the velocity time graph, the area bounded by the graph is below the time axis because the displacement is negative. The area of this triangle is four meters. For the final four seconds, the object continues to move in a negative direction at a constant velocity of two meters per second, so its displacement is negative eight meters. From the position time graph, we can see the displacement in the first 20 seconds of motion is zero. The object begins and ends at the same position. From the velocity time graph, we can calculate the displacement in the 20 seconds of motion by adding the areas for each segment of the journey. 
the total area is zero meters, therefore the displacement is zero meters. Just like we can develop velocity time graphs from position time graphs, we can develop acceleration time graphs from velocity time graphs. Recall that the gradient of the velocity time graph is the acceleration of the object. For uniform acceleration, the acceleration time graph will be linear with a gradient of zero. The position of the graph on the vertical axis is equal to the gradient of the velocity time graph. We can read the change in velocity from the velocity time graph. For the motion depicted, the object's change in velocity is 2 meters per second. The change in velocity can also be determined from an acceleration time graph. This is the area bounded by the graph and the time axis. From the acceleration time graph, the area is equal to 0.4 meters per second squared, multiplied by 5 seconds, which is 2 meters per second. This change in velocity is the same as was read from the velocity time graph. So, using the velocity time graph we previously examined, we can develop an acceleration time graph for the same motion. First, we can determine the acceleration from the gradient of the velocity time graph. Where the gradient is positive, the acceleration is a horizontal line above the time axis. Where the gradient is negative, the acceleration is a horizontal line below the time axis. Where the gradient is zero, the acceleration is zero. When the object has positive acceleration, the change in velocity is positive. The area bounded by the graph and the time axis is above the time axis. When the object has negative acceleration, the change in velocity is negative. The area bounded by the graph and the time axis is below the time axis. When the object is not accelerating, its velocity does not change and there is no area bound by the graph. We can read the total change in velocity directly from the velocity time graph. In the first 20 seconds, the object's total change in velocity is negative 2 meters per second. The object's initial velocity is 0 meters per second and the object's final velocity is negative 2 meters per second. If we add the areas bound by the acceleration time graph in the same time period, we get the same change in velocity, negative 2 meters per second. Let's apply our understanding of motion graphs to the type of question you are likely to encounter during your learning and revision. A car travels along a straight road. It accelerates from rest for 5.0 seconds at a rate of 3.0 meters per second squared, then travels at a constant velocity for 10.0 seconds, then decelerates to a stop in 4.0 seconds. We are going to draw a velocity time graph and a position time graph for this motion. Let's begin with the velocity time graph. Since the car travels on a straight road, we'll consider its direction of travel to be positive. The car begins from rest and accelerates at 3.0 meters per second squared for 5 seconds. The graph will have a positive gradient of 3.0 meters per second squared during this segment. Since the car begins from rest, the velocity after 5 seconds is 15 meters per second. The car's velocity is 15 meters per second for the next 10.0 seconds, and the car's velocity decreases from 15 meters per second to 0 meters per second in the final 4 seconds. To accurately draw the velocity time graph, we only need to calculate the final velocity after the initial acceleration. To draw the corresponding position time graph, we need to calculate the car's displacement for each segment. In the first five seconds, the car accelerates. The car's displacement can be calculated by the area under the velocity time graph during the first five seconds, which is positive 37.5 meters. The position time graph will be an upward curve that gets steeper with time. The first segment of the car's journey on the position time graph will be an upward curve that extends from zero meters at zero seconds to 37.5 meters at five seconds. In the next 10.0 seconds, the car has uniform velocity. The car's displacement in this segment is the area of the green rectangle shown here, which is positive 150 meters. The position time graph will be a straight line with a positive gradient of 15 meters per second. The second segment of the car's journey on the position time graph will extend from 37.5 meters at 5 seconds to 187.5 meters at 15 seconds. The car has constant velocity in this segment. This velocity is equal to the final velocity the car reaches in the first segment. When drawing a position time graph from a velocity time graph, it's important to show continuity in the gradient from the first segment to the second segment to show an understanding of this. In the final four seconds, the car decelerates. The car's displacement in this segment is the area of the yellow triangle, which is positive 30 meters. The position time graph will be a downward curve that gets less steep with time and becomes horizontal to show the car has come to a stop. 
the final segment of the car's journey on the position time graph will extend from 187.5 meters at 15 seconds to 217.5 meters at 19 seconds. Drawing velocity time and position time graphs are common paper two questions. Interpreting velocity time or position time graph to select a corresponding graph with a different vertical axis is a common paper one question. All right, so just a final summary of the key understandings needed about motion graphs. For uniform motion, a position time graph is a straight line, the velocity time graph is a horizontal line, and the acceleration time graph is a horizontal line along the time axis. The area under the velocity time graph is equal to the object's displacement during this period. For non-uniform motion, a position time graph is a curved line, the velocity time graph is a straight line, assuming uniform acceleration, and the acceleration time graph is a horizontal line. The area bounded by the velocity time graph is, again, the displacement. The area bounded by the acceleration time graph is the change in velocity.